So let us talk about the biogeochemical cycles. What are these biogeochemical cycles? There are certain chemicals which are entering between the, they are recycling, they are moving between the biological agents and geo that is the earth. So the chemicals are being transferred from the living things to the earth, the earth to the living things. What are those chemicals? What are those particular chemical constituents or components? Especially the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. They are cycling between the living things and the earth. From the earth, we get certain things into the bodies of plants and animals. And from the plants and animals, certain things, they go back to the earth. Sometimes in between, they may enter into the atmosphere. So, the chemicals, they are cycling between air, that is atmosphere, to earth. And from the earth, going to bio, living things, plants and animals. In this way, they are cycled. You call them as biogeochemical cycles. Right? So now let us see what are those. The first one is the water cycle. The nitrogen cycle. The carbon cycle. The oxygen cycle. The water cycle tells that how the water and rains are formed and how the water is circulated between the atmosphere and the earth. The nitrogen cycle tells that how the nitrogen is reaching the soil again in the form of nutrients to the plants and how the nitrogen it comes to the living forms. Carbon cycle tells the cycling of carbon and oxygen cycle explains the cycling of oxygen. Let us begin with the water cycle. So here the water cycle, if you see that the sun, the sunlight, the heat of the sun it makes the water present on the surface of the earth and even under the surface of the earth to evaporate. How? Here because of sunlight, the water in the water bodies get heated up and it goes up in the form of water vapor. Evaporation, you call it as evaporation. The water that is present in the bodies of animals it goes into the water by perspiration, sweating and when we breathe out we leave some water vapor in this way. And the water that is present in the underground, that water is absorbed by the roots of the trees and plants, that is by a process of transpiration, transpiration, the plants and trees, they release the water vapor through stomata. So this water vapor reaches the atmosphere. So the water vapor is coming out by transpiration, by perspiration, by evaporation. So this water vapor is collected here and it forms the clouds. So as we discussed it there, how the rains were formed, the tiny droplets of water vapor, they take one particle as a nucleus, like a dust particle as a nucleus. They aggregate around the dust particle. When they grow in size, when the size is big enough, then they condense. The process of condensation takes place. And due to the condensation, they grow in size, they become heavy as a raindrops and the raindrops fall down as rain. So this cycle is called as water cycle. Now let us look at the nitrogen cycle. What is the prominence or importance of nitrogen? Certain biomolecules means the molecules present in our body. The most important ones are proteins. They are made up of amino acids. Amino acids are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. So nitrogen is an important constituent of the amino acids. Amino acids make up the proteins. Every living organism, it needs proteins to build up its cell, cell wall, cell components, cell functions. Every enzyme is a protein. So living organisms, they have enzymes, hormones, of course, not all hormones are protein based, but enzymes are proteins and they need proteins for the structural construction of cells, cell organelles. Proteins are required for bodybuilding. You know, proteins are the bodybuilding foods. For every organism to grow, to divide its cell, proteins are required. Proteins are required in to form the DNA. 
DNA molecule, deoxyribonucleic acid, which forms the genetic material of any, uh, every living organism. So, for that, the nitrogen is very, very essential. The nitrogen is also uh, helpful for the plants to form certain compounds called alkaloids. And uh, urea is the form which is useful for the plants. And urea is a waste product in animals. Of course, it is useful for the growth of plants. So, nitrogen is found in all these compounds, bio compounds, which are very essential. But where is this nitrogen? The nitrogen is there in the atmosphere. 78% of air is nitrogen. But in this nitrogen, how much nitrogen? Even though there is a lot of nitrogen is available, all living organisms, plants and animals cannot use the atmospheric nitrogen directly. We are breathing the air. We are taking the oxygen from the air directly by the lungs. You cannot take nitrogen directly by the lungs. Because in the molecular form, nitrogen is inert, non-reactive. So this inert form of nitrogen is not useful for plants and animals. It should be in the form of nitrites or nitrates. But how this atmospheric nitrogen turns to these nitrites and nitrates? So the nitrogen, it converts to nitrites and nitrates. The nitrogen, it converts to nitrites and nitrates by nitrogen fixing bacteria. Nitrogen fixing bacteria are a special kind of bacteria. Those are found in the root nodules of some dicot plants. Bacteria. They are found in the root nodules of leguminous plants. So sometimes they may be living free. Sometimes they are associated with the root nodules of the leguminous plants. This nitrogen fixing bacteria will convert the atmospheric nitrogen into nitrites or nitrates. Is there any other way or only this bacteria? So nitrogen fixing bacteria, they fix the atmospheric nitrogen. Apart from this, a physical process, a physical process called lightning lightning so when there is a storm you will find a big light come in the sky so the light because of electric discharge this creates high pressure and temperature in particular place where this kind of uh, lightning happens at this point the nitrogen in the atmosphere the nitrogen in the atmosphere it turns to oxides of nitrogen these oxides of nitrogen it becomes to nitric acid. So this nitric acid, it mixes with the rainwater and it falls down into the soil. There again it is used by the organism. So in this way, lightening helps in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen. And nitrogen fixing bacteria, they help in the fixing of atmospheric nitrogen. So when the atmospheric nitrogen is converted to nitrites and nitrates, these compounds are easily taken by the plants. So plants make up amino acid and proteins. By eating the plant and plant products, animals get the proteins into their bodies. This is the way how the atmospheric nitrogen reaches our body. This is the way how the atmospheric nitrogen reaches the body of the animals, plants. But after the plant and animal dies, how the nitrogen goes back to the atmosphere? When plant and animal bodies are, when they are dead, their bodies decompose. So when their bodies are decomposed, from there, again, the proteins and amino acids, they break down into. So we know that proteins, they break down to amino acids. And these amino acids, they break down into nitrogenous compounds. Nitrogenous oxides, nitrogen oxides. So these oxides or may turn to urea and ammonia and nitrites and nitrates. So this, the nitrogen compounds are converted to nitrates and nitrites by, so here how they are decomposed, the proteins are converted to amino acids while decomposing when the dead body of a plant or animal is decomposing and they are converted to nitrites or nitrates that is by another bacteria
So these nitrates and nitrates are converted to molecular nitrogen. These are converted by molecular nitrogen by this bacteria. So by the chemical reactions of the proteins, they break down into amino acids and then break down into nitrates and nitrates. So by that, they finally turn to atmospheric nitrogen. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.